All right, hi everybody. We are gonna get started with story time here in a minute or two. Uh, we'll wait for some friends to join us, but then we have stories, songs, a lot of felt boards today, some puppets, and all sorts of other fun. So in just a minute or two, we will get started with our story time. Wonder if you can guess what our stories are about today. Hmm, 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 Well, let me see. They are mostly about animals and they're animals that like to live where it's very cold. Hmm, what animals can you think of that like to live where it's cold? I bet you're thinking of some right now, are you? Maybe, let me show you a clue. What about like, maybe like a polar bear, maybe. Maybe, hmm, maybe like a penguin, hmm. I bet you can think of some others too. We have a lot of fun stories planned today and I think it's about that time. Should we get started? All right, I think we should too. Let's get started with streaming story time. Hi everybody, good morning. Hello, how are you today? Good. I am so happy to be with you today to share some stories. My name is Elizabeth and I'm coming to you today from Loudoun District Library with stories, songs, felt, puppets, all kinds of fun stuff. And I think we're getting this story time in right in time before it starts to warm up. It's still a little chilly today, so it'll it'll feel right to read some stories about. Well, you'll see what we're going to read about today. But let's start the way we always do. Should we warm up our hands? All right, let's see them, you ready? We clap and say hello, we clap and say hello to all our friends at story time. We clap and say hello, yay! Great job. All right, we've got our hands. Let's warm up our feet, you ready? We stamp and say hello, we stamp and say hello to all our friends at story time, we stamp and say hello, yay! Great job, all right, we clapped, we stamped, and now we wave, hi everybody! We wave and say hello, we wave and say hello to all our friends at story time, we wave and say hello, hi everybody! So glad to be here today. Now. Before we find out what our stories are about, for those of you who don't know yet, we are gonna get some clues from this box. Now, before we open it and find out what letter is inside, we better sing all of our letters with the ABCs. Can you sing the ABCs with me? Ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q R S T U V W X Y and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Okay, let's see what's in here. I wonder what letter got mailed to me. Let's open up the mailbox so we can see. All right, hmm. What's in there? Let's take a look. I'm gonna open it up and, oh, very sticky today. Inside, I found a letter. Do you know what letter that is? Hmm? Yeah, it's the letter P, that's right. And P makes a p, p, p sound. Hmm. So whatever is in here starts with the letter P. There's a lot of stuff in here. Wait a second, you guys. What is this? A pumpkin in March? Does that seem right? Do you think we're doing pumpkin stories? No, no pumpkin stories. No way. All right, hmm, something else that starts with P. Oh, it's a pen. Are we doing pen stories? Do you think so? No, not 
pen stories today. Um, 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 things that start with P. <gasps> What's that? <gasps> yeah, it's a puzzle piece. Oh, that's two piece, puzzle piece, but we're not doing puzzle stories today either. Though that might be fun. <gasps> oh, there's one more thing. I think this one might be it. <gasps> what is that? It's a penguin, that's right. Penguin starts with P, and we are doing stories today about penguins, polar bears, and all kinds of Arctic animals. So, I'm gonna set Penguin to the side so that he can watch our stories today, because guess what? Our first story, it's actually about a penguin. Now, our first story comes from this book, which I love. It's called Penguin and Pinecone, a friendship story, and it's by Selena Yoon. And I'm gonna tell this story today on my felt board. And it goes like this. Oh, there's Penguin. One day, Penguin was walking through the snow when he found something very unusual. It was an unusual object. Hmm. It was too brown to be a snowball. It was too hard to be food and it was too pokey to be an egg. Huh, he said, I wonder what this is. Do you know what it is? <laughs> Do you remember the title? Penguin and Pinecone. <gasps> well, whatever you are, he said, you look cold. I will make you something. And he got to work knitting a scarf just for Pinecone. <gasps> Much better, he said. Penguin loved playing with his new friend. They played and played and played, but one day he noticed that Pinecone did not look so good. He was starting to look really cold, a little sad and very shivery. <gasps> What's wrong with my friend, he asked. Well, Grandpa Penguin said, this is no place for a Pinecone. They need to be in the forest. They can't grow big and strong on the ice. Hmm, well, said Penguin, then I will have to take Pinecone to the forest. So he did. He got out his sled and he put Pinecone on the sled and off he went to take Pinecone to the forest where he belonged. And as he walked, the wind blew cold, ready? And Penguin pulled the sled, ready? And the wind blew, cold. And Penguin pulled the sled, ready? And at last, they came to the forest that was full of tall, beautiful evergreen trees. Well, said Penguin, I guess this is where you belong, Pinecone. And he put him in a safe spot. Well, grow big and strong and I'll come back and see you soon. Penguin was a little sad to leave, but he knew that this is where Pinecone belonged. So he came back home with his sled. The wind blew. He was cold and he pulled his sled all the way home. So Penguin got home and a lot of time passed. He did not hear from Pinecone for a very long time. But one day he decided to go visit and see how his friend was doing. So once again, he packed up his sled and off he went back to the forest. On his way there, what did the wind do? How did it feel? And what did he do with the sled? Until at last, he was back to the forest once again. And there were all the tall evergreen trees. He looked and looked and looked. There were trees everywhere, but he did not see Pinecone anywhere. Where is my friend, he asked. Hmm. But as he looked harder, he saw someone who looked a little 
familiar. Do you recognize that scarf? Pine cone! Pine cone was all grown up into a great big pine tree. Oh, Penguin was so happy to see his friend and Penguin and Pinecone played and played and played. And at the end of the day, when Penguin had to go home, Pinecone was sad to see his friend go, but he knew that the forest was no place for a penguin. I'll be back soon, said Penguin. I'll come to visit. And guess what? He did, and he brought some other gifts for the other grown up pine cones in the forest. And even though pine cone and penguin lived far apart, they always stayed in each other's hearts because love grows. The end. Yay! Oh, what a great story. And I really like those felts too. That was a very fun one. Well, penguin and pine cone and arctic animals made me think of okay this is a pretty silly song and i don't know how well it's going to show up because look what color <gasps> what kind of bear is that it's a polar bear and you know polar bears do live in the snow so we'll put him here in the snow and you can still see him he looks great now the silly thing about this polar bear is he's looking for his favorite underwear <laughs> and guess what color his favorite underwear are? Red. He can't find them anywhere. He's got his orange ones. No, that won't do. He's going to look and look and look. And when he looks, he sings a song. Are you ready? It goes like this. Oh, where, oh, where are my red underwear? Oh, where, oh, where could they be? I've looked up high and I've looked down low. Did someone hide them from me? All right, we better look in the laundry basket. Let's see, what do you think? Are these the red underwear? Hmm, let's try them on. Do those look red? No, they're purple. Let's sing our song again, ready? Oh, where, oh, where are my red underwear? Oh, where, oh, where could they be? I've looked up high and I've looked down low. Did someone hide them from me? All right, those won't do, those won't do. What else is in the laundry basket? <gasps> oh, blue. Pretty snazzy, but they're not the red ones. Let's sing again, ready? Oh, where, oh, where are my red underwear? Oh, where, oh, where could they be? I've looked up high and I've looked down low. Did someone hide them from me? I don't think anybody hit them. I think they might still be in the laundry basket. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, hmm. Some nice dark green ones. Will those work, polar bear? No, they're not the red ones. Oh, where, oh, where are my red underwear? Oh, where, oh, where could they be? I've looked up high and I've looked down low. Did someone hide them from me? Hmm, no, that's not quite right. Oh, wait a second. <gasps> Close. I don't know, though. Those look maybe more like pink. Oh, so close. All right, sing it one more time. Oh, where, oh, where are my red underwear? Oh, where, oh, where could they be? I've looked up high and I've looked down low. Did someone hide them from me? Oh, there's one more pair. <gasps> hey, uh, not the pink ones. <gasps> it's the red underwear, yay! We found them. Great job, everybody. Oh, Polar Bear is so relieved. He can wear his very favorite pair. All right, friends, speaking of polar bears, I have a polar bear story for you today. And you might know the book, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? Well, Eric Carle has other books like it. And this one is called Polar Bear, Polar Bear, What Do You Hear? And I am going to play some of the real animal sounds. 
that these animals make. Like, what do you think a bear says, a polar bear? Yeah, like a growl. Grrr. Let me play it for you here. Oh, did you hear that? Roar, roar. Yeah. So this story goes like this. Polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear? I hear, what's this? A lion roaring in my ear. Want to hear what a lion roaring sounds like? Oh. Oh. Uh, yeah, maybe you can make that sound too. Lion, lion, what do you hear? I hear a hippopotamus snorting in my ear. What do you think snorting sounds like? Okay, this is a hippo, ready? Oh, that's a cool sound. <laughs> hippopotamus, hippopotamus, what do you hear? I hear a flamingo fluting in my ear. A fluting flamingo? Let's hear it. <laughs> flamingo, flamingo, what do you hear? I hear a zebra braying in my ear. When I think of braying, I think of a donkey. Let's see what a zebra sounds like. Ready? Ooh. Yeah, kind of like hee-haw, hee-haw. Zebra, zebra, what do you hear? I hear a snake hissing in my ear. Can you hiss like a snake? Hiss. Let's hear a snake. I think this one is more of a rattlesnake. Let's listen. Ooh. <laughs> Can you hiss? hiss? Yeah. Snake, snake, what do you hear? I hear an elephant trumpeting in my ear. Want to hear a real elephant? Let's hear it. Ooh. Brrr. Elephant, elephant, what do you hear? I hear a leopard snarling in my ear. Ooh, a snarl. Let's see, a snarling leopard. Oh. That sounds cool. Listen again. <laughs> leopard, leopard, what do you hear? I hear a peacock yelping in my ear. Have you ever heard a peacock yelp? All right, we're about to. Here goes. <coughs> peacock, peacock, what do you hear? I hear a walrus bellowing in my ear. A bellowing walrus? What do you think bell bellowing sounds like? <coughs> like oh, oh, oh. <coughs> <laughs> walrus, walrus, what do you hear? I hear a zookeeper whistling in my ear. Now, can any of you whistle? I am not a great whistler. That's the best I can do, but I also have my slide whistle. Want to try to whistle with me? <laughs> zookeeper, zookeeper, what do you hear? I hear lots of zoo animals making noises in my ear. The end. Yay! Great job. I really liked hearing what some of those animals sounded like in real life because I don't think I've ever heard a peacock or a walrus or a zebra. So it was pretty cool. All of these animals were at the zoo. Now I have a zoo song about animal sounds at the zoo. Some of you may have sung it with me before. And I have some really big puppets we're gonna use for this. So let's start, oh, oh boy, with a great big lion. All right, and what's the lion say? Roar. 
You can hear a lion roaring at the zoo. Ready? Roar! You can hear a lion roaring at the zoo. Roar! You can hear a lion roaring. You can hear a lion roaring. You can hear a lion roaring at the zoo. Roar! Good job. All right, what else do we have? Oh, what about, this was in our story. Uh, walrus. What did a walrus do? Bellow? You can hear a walrus bellowing at the zoo. Ready to do a bellow? You can hear a walrus bellowing at the zoo. You can hear a walrus bellowing. You can hear a walrus bellowing. You can hear a walrus bellowing at the zoo. Pretty good, pretty good walrus sound. I bet you guys had some good ones too. Okay, let's see. Oh, oh, who's this guy with the long trunk? An elephant. What's an elephant do? Trumpets, right? Let's get him so you can see him. You can hear an elephant trumpeting at the zoo. You can hear an elephant trumpeting at the zoo. You can hear an elephant trumpeting. You can hear an elephant trumpeting. You can hear an elephant trumpet at the zoo. Ready? I have one more enormous puppet for you. Who's this guy from our story? Yeah, a hippo, right? And what did a hippo do? Snorted, right? <laughs> Ready? You can hear a hippo snorting at the zoo. You can hear a hippo snorting at the zoo. You can hear a hippo snorting. You can hear a hippo snorting. You can hear a hippo snorting at the zoo. Good job. Yay! Man, those are kind of some tricky animal sounds. I bet you guys were really great at them, though. All right. One more story for you today, and it's from this book, which I really love. It's called 10 on the Sled, and if you look closely, there are a whole bunch of Arctic animals riding that sled. I see a caribou, I see a polar bear, I see, looks like an Arctic wolf, a seal, hmm, all sorts of cool animals on that sled. And it's a sing-along book. And I just so happen to have a sled for those animals to ride. It's a really big sled because we got to get 10 on the sled. So the story starts like this. 10 on the sled by Kim Norman. On a sunlit night neath a snowy moon, there was one on the sled then two, but soon there were 10. All right, so let's get all 10 animals on this sled. You think we can do it? All right, count them with me, ready? One, how about this guy next? Two, who do we have next? Moose, three, might have to sit close together. There's our wolf. Four, walrus, five, seal makes six. Oh, then we've got a, a goat, seven, a little fox, eight, a bunny, a hare, nine, and a little squirrel for number 10. I like that they're all wearing their winter clothes too, so they stay nice and warm. All right, you ready to sing it with me? I think you probably know this tune. There were 10 on the sled, and the caribou said, keep going, keep going. So they all kept going and oh, squirrel fell out. Whoop, uh-oh. Squirrel fell out, I'll put him down here in the snow. Now, how many are on the sled? Nine. There were nine on the sled and the caribou said, it's snowing, 
keep going. So they all kept going and hair fell out. Whoop! Oh, snowshoe hair fell out. Plop! Right into the snow. All right, two fell out. How many are left? Eight. There were eight on the sled and the caribou said, it's snowing, keep going. So they all kept going and Fox fell out. Wee! Oh no, plop. Hmm, uh-oh. We had eight and then we lost one. Do we have seven? We have seven. There were seven on the sled and the caribou said, it's snowing keep going. So they all kept going till goat fell out. Woo! Plop. Okay, there were seven. One fell out and now we have six. Six. There were six on the sled and the caribou said, it's snowing, keep going. So they all kept going and seal fell out. Uh oh, here comes seal. Boom, into the snow. Okay, now how many do we have? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. There were five on the sled and the caribou said, it's snowing, keep going. So they all kept going and walrus fell out. Do you think he bellowed? <laughs> into the snow. Okay, now how many? Let's count. One, two, three, four. There were four on the sled and the caribou said, it's snowing, keep going. So they all kept going and Fox fell out. Wait a second, Fox already fell out. Who's this gray one? Wolf, wolf fell out, boop. How many now? One, two, three. There were three on the sled and the caribou said, it's snowing keep going. So they all kept going and Moose fell out. Uh-oh, here's a big one. There he goes. Moo, boom. Oh, how many are left? Just caribou and polar bear. Two. There were two on the sled and the caribou said, it's snowing, keep going. So they all kept going and polar bear fell out. Boom. Now what do you think is gonna happen? Do you think caribou is gonna keep going? Let me show you on the, on the page here. Oh, there was one in the sled and the caribou said, I'm only, I'm lonely, I'm chilled to the bone. A reindeer likes flying, but never alone. So what's gonna happen? One through 10, they all leaped on again for a little more fun and one more run in the moonlit land of the midnight sun. There they go, all back on the sled. Whee! The end. Yay! Great job. Oh, sledding is so much fun. I, did you have any fun sledding this winter? I sure did. I know, we only got a little snow left out there, but. I think spring will be fun too. I'm pretty excited about that as well. Speaking of exciting, we have read our books, sung our songs, but I have something exciting to tell you before we're done today, which is that on Monday, we will have some new take and makes available here at the library. And I wanna show you what our March ones are. So as always, we've got them in our paper bags. They'll be available inside the library um, up by the youth desk, but we're always happy to run them out to you if you prefer curbside pickup as well. So we've got them for different ages. We have one for teens and adults, but more fun. We've got them for kids as well. And our one for the younger kids, our zero to five-ers, is to do, I don't know if you can see it there, some watercolor magic eggs. We're gonna decorate some eggs. And some of you might be decorating eggs this year, or some of you might see some eggs this spring. So we've got some watercolor paper cut in the shape of an egg. You got it. Inside the bag, we also have oh, watercolors. And here's where the magic comes in. I don't know if you've ever tried this, but if you draw 
on an egg with white crayon and then you paint over it with watercolor, something cool happens. And if you sprinkle some salt on your wet watercolor, something else cool happens. And so we'll have those kits available Monday if you want to decorate some eggs of your own. Maybe some Easter eggs, maybe some spring bird eggs, whatever you are feeling with your creativity. And for our school age kids, so our five or six and uppers, March is reading month. And so we have some cool reading and writing activities in here. So in these bags, we've got a thing of colored pencils. And with those colored pencils, you can make your very own book. So we have some blank books inside where you can be an author and write a book of your own. And we also have some very cool ready to color bookmarks. And those are our March's Reading Month packs. So all of those take and makes, along with our teen and adult ones, will be starting up on Monday uh, here at the library while supplies last. And we have a lot, so should be good for a while. So I hope that we'll see you come by and pick them up. All right. In the meantime, I think we have reached the end of our streaming story time for today. I hope you had fun. I had lots of fun reading and singing with you. And I hope that you will join me again next Friday morning and we will do some more stories and some more songs. In the meantime, should we say goodbye for now? All right, ready? Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. Goodbye, friends. I'm glad you came to play. Yay! Have a great weekend and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye!